Hi everybody, I'm Mike Sokol from RV Electricity, and as promised, here's my video on multimeter usage. And the first sections here are going to be on AC measurements and then DC measurements. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, in this section, we're going to be talking about measuring AC volts with a multimeter, looking at expected AC voltage in the campground, what is the hold function, what does overload mean in measuring voltage drop across neutral and ground, and measuring RV hot skin voltage to earth. So measuring AC volts with a multimeter, here's the bits and pieces we're going to do. You need to set the AC range to the next highest voltage you could see. Plug the probes into the common volt ohm milliamp jacks. Confirm your range is set to AC volts before touching the meter probes to any power. Make sure you don't have the whole button depressed. Use one hand whenever possible and put your unused hand in your back pocket so you don't actually ground your, accidentally ground yourself out. So you really want to set the meter to the 600 volt scale because you could encounter 240 volts on any connection. And here's why. So if you go look in any RV campground or even in your house, um, you have something that's called split phase power coming in. It's split phase 120, 240. It could be 120, 208 in some three phase circuits, but let's just talk about um, regular split phase first. So basically all 50 amp pedestals have, should have 240 or 100, and, excuse me, 208 coming in. So here's hot one and hot two. And you can see there is a neutral down the middle, and that's what splits that voltage from 240 volts down into a pair of 120. So you've got 120 on the one air conditioner, you've got 120 on the other air conditioner, you then have 120 volts for your microwave, 120 volts for your converter charger, 120 volts for your um, hair dryer, and on and on and on. Now, large coaches, can have some 240 volt appliances, but we're talking about big ones with built-in generators and such. And that would be like dryers and maybe some stoves and that kind of stuff. But vast, vast majority, 99% of all RVs you're ever going to encounter are set up just like this, 50 amp ones anyway. So this is what you can encounter in a campground. So typically, okay, this is your pedestal box. This is your power coming in from the main service panel. So we've got 120 and 120 out of phase with each other. So this is 240 volts that is split. So this has got a 50 amp double pole breaker, what we call a two pole breaker. And we have a neutral here to split the, split the voltage in half. And we have a ground, what we call the equipment grounding conductor EGC. And this is what you're going to see in a typical campground pedestal should be either 240 or 208 volts and you notice i also have stating in here that you could measure anywhere from zero to three volts or so between neutral and ground and still be co-compliant same way over here on your 30 amp outlet now notice a 30 amp outlet these are all of these are oriented with the ground at the top and that's just so that the, all of the conventional rv extension cords just will hang down properly Okay, what is this whole function I'm talking about? So basically, that locks the meter to, uh, to display into whatever voltage it was reading at that moment. And this is handy so you can kind of watch what's going on um, when you're testing voltage, if you can't see the meter face. Um, but if you press the whole button uh, while the display is at zero, you can be fooled into thinking there's no power when there is power. Let me let you see what this looks like. Okay, so I've got my meter set up right now. I've got about 120 volts over here. Let's go ahead and turn this off. We're going to set this to the 600 volt range. Power him up. There. So now we're not in hold mode. We're re reading 115 volts. If you notice when it came up, the whole button was engaged and it was said zero volts. So this is all fine. That's our voltage is going up and down. All good, right? But if we hit our hold button and we turn our power off, it still says we have 115 volts. Well, we did have 115 volts, but no, not right now. But let's say that we go ahead and disengage the hold button. So, and let's say we hit hold 
while the power is off. We turn power back on. It's We know we've got like 115, 120 volts in here, but the meter is saying we have zero. And the dangerous part is, well, guess what? If you go ahead and get your hands inside of the circuit, then you could have, they could be energized. So you always want to confirm that you do not have this on hold whenever you begin any measurements. So what does the OL display mean? Well, it means over limit. So the display will show OL when you measure a higher voltage than the meter is set for. This is why I recommend that you set the meter to the 600 volt range, even if you're testing 120 volt circuits. If you set it to the 200 volt range and you accidentally encounter a 240 volt circuit, it will just say oh, over limit. Let me, let me let you see what that would look like. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 200 volt range rather than the 600 volt range. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in a 240 volt thing. It says OL for over, over limit. In reality, it is uh, probably about 230, 240 volts. See, 237, 238 volts. So you always wanna set this to the next highest voltage. So you can see right here, we have a 600 volt range and a 240, or excuse me, a 200 volt range. 200 volt range is just dangerous when you're checking circuits because it won't blow anything up in the meter, but guess what? It doesn't tell you what the actual voltage is. So make sure that you set this to the 600 volt range anytime you're reading things. And, and in fact, the only difference between the two of those on the display is the fact that with your, when you're in the 200 volt range, you have 113.6 volts or 0.7. You know, it's got that extra decimal place. Um, but the, uh, the fact is most of the time, all you're wanting to do is measure within a volt and that's absolutely fine. Uh, voltage drop across neutral to ground. There's always a voltage drop, uh, between the hot and neutral wires under load. Um, it's just because, well, loaded, uh, you know, voltage drop is required for current to flow actually. However, the, the drop across the neutral conductor is opposite polarity of the current through the hot wire. So basically, if you have a 10 volt drop from say 120 down to 110 volts in uh, a, a circuit, whatever it may be, an extension cord, if, if you were to measure from neutral, from ground over here to neutral, you're gonna see half of the voltage of that drop is gonna be right here. So it's absolutely normal for it to be three volts or four volts or so in most circuits. So there's nothing wrong. It's not a hot skin. It's the fact that the ground is staying at ground and the neutral is shifting away from that. Measuring hot skin voltage to earth. I don't have a bucket of dirt here, but what I do all the time is I take a screwdriver, stick it in the ground, make sure it's wet. I usually dump a gallon of water on there if there's any, if it's dry dirt. Um, and then I need to go and put the probe, set, set this to the 600 volt scale. It should not be possible for it to be more than 120 volts, but man, oh man, I've seen some weird stuff. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to measure to some place on the RV that doesn't have paint. So I normally use, um, a screw jack thing or a lug on a wheel or whatever. Um, and to kind of get an idea. So now here's the interesting thing. Up to five volts AC is permissible, possible and permissible, even if everything's correct when you're plugged into uh, shore power because the power company itself's ground coming in could be three or four volts above earth ground simply because of unbalance in their three-phase systems. So this is more common than you might think. I've measured up to five volts difference between building steel and earth ground and industrial buildings. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure it out until I figured out, well, that's what happens with, the, with our friends at the power company. Okay, end of part A, AC voltage measurements. Stay tuned for part B soon, and I'm gonna be showing you DC measurements.
I'm Mike Sokol from RV Electricity. Thanks for watching.